university first became the caretaker of Villa La Pietra, the real priority with the collection was first of all to get a sense of what was here and do an inventory, and then also what condition all of the objects were in. In the collection, there, there are lots of different um, works of art from all uh, periods of time. So there, there is ancient sculpture, there's a lot of, of Renaissance painting, but this is really a modern painting and sort of defining modern, say, since the Impressionists. The artist uh, is, is James Montgomery Flagg, and he was probably a friend of Arthur's and probably were, was coming to visit them when uh, this portrait was, was painted. He's really much better known as an illustrator and his most famous work is the Uncle Sam uh, poster, the I Want You poster, um, the recruitment poster from World War I. The sitter is really the lady of the house. This is Hortense Mitchell Acton and it was painted probably judging from where the garden is and the dress that she's wearing, it was painted probably around 1907 to 1910. At some point, and we, we don't know when or why or by whom, the canvas had been detached from the stretcher support. And along with a, a few other paintings, it had been rolled or folded up and put into a paper package, which meant that A, the canvas itself was distorted, wasn't flat, and that everywhere where the folds had happened, the paint had gotten crushed and had fallen off. So there were, um, in, in addition to the fact that you had this unsupported canvas and that it was, was not planar, you had um, uh, essentially five lines where the folds were across of paint losses. There's an interesting corollary um, with Picasso's Demoiselles d'Avignon at the Museum of Modern Art. In that, that painting as well, after it was shown and sort of created a scandal, um, Picasso himself took it off the stretcher and folded it up and stored it under his bed. <laughs> The first priority was really stabilization. So oftentimes with conservation treatments, there, there are two parts to it or two aspects to it. The, the preservation side to um, preserve the work and, and make sure that it exists in, into the future. And then the sort of presentation side, the, the, the aesthetic side of it and making it look good. The first phase of the treatment was, uh, first of all, flattening the, the canvas. The goal was, to be, be able to actually get it onto a new stretcher so you, that you could actually hold it up and look at it as a work of art. So that, first of all, involved um, consolidating the paint. So everywhere that, where the paint was crushed, there was paint that was lost, but then the paint around it was loose. It wasn't very well attached to the canvas. So the first thing was to um, introduce some adhesive in, in between the, that flaking paint and the canvas and to put that back down so you wouldn't lose any more paint. At that point, it was really noticeable that these, these lines of loss of, along the, where the canvas had been folded were really distracting. We made the decision to um, in-paint those losses or sort of compensate for those losses. When we are doing in-painting or retouching, um, as in all uh, aspects of conservation, we're using very specific materials that have been uh, tested and chosen to uh, be, first of all, stable so that they won't change over time, so the colors won't alter over time because of the materials that we're using. And also those materials should be reversible. You should be able to remove that in painting um, at any point in the future without doing any damage to the original work. Each area of the painting, there are very subtle uh, color and tonal differences. So for each area of loss, you have to custom mix the color of the paint to match exactly, exactly there. And so um, what I'm using are are dry pigments in, in a range of different colors and a, a medium that you mix with it um, to, to actually act as a binder. So you're essentially custom making the paint that, that you're using. One thing that has really helped with this treatment is that we have an archival photograph of the painting before the, treat, the damage happened. Even though it's a black and white photograph, you can see quite a bit of detail in it. So in areas where there was lost paint, 
you know exactly what the artist meant to put there. You don't have to either leave it vague or try to invent something. You can, can read from the photograph. This project has really been unusual, but really every conservation treatment is unique. That's why several years ago, all of the conservators involved at La Pietra met to work out general guidelines to help clarify and unify our approach. Because we realize that we're not just preserving individual objects, but the whole of La Pietra with its very unique and interesting history and aesthetic.